Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. begin with the lecture number 18, natural dyeing of wool. We have already studied the natural dyeing of cotton, natural dyeing of silk and now we move on to the next lecture which is pertaining to natural dyeing of wool. Natural dyeing of wool with new source dye sources, wool dyeing with natural dyeing plants colorants have been practiced for a long time. New sources of natural dyes have been used for pure wool dyeing. Plants like Gomferena, Globosa, Impatiens, Balsamania, Mirabilis Jalapa, Nyctanthus arbortistris, Rizeda Lutella are all some of these plants which are new sources which have been used for wool dyeing. Some innovation at the stage of pretreatment has been mentioned in this section, in this particular lecture because every time we want to give you a new kind of treatise that how cotton dyeing is different from silk dyeing, how silk dyeing is different from wool dyeing is what should emerge out after this lecture. Wool being proteinaceous has good dye adherence ability which makes dyed yarn very evenly dyed with the above mentioned dye sources and we have used many other sources, this we have just named a few of them. The beauty of wool and silk is that they are proteinaceous material having amide linkage. What is an amide linkage? It is CNH2. Now, C double bond O and NH2 both have oxygen and nitrogen having their own respective lone pairs and these lone pairs are beautifully designed in the proteinaceous matter to be a good site for chelation of metal atoms. Quite similar to silk, wool also does not need pretreatment with tannic acid and can be directly taken for pre mordanting after scouring which is meant for surface cleaning. So, just the way we have surface cleaning for cotton, similarly we saw there is degumming and scouring for silk and even in the case of wool. We need to make it more receptive for taking up dye, therefore surface cleaning of wool is essential. Composition of wool, natural dyeing is a traditional and sustainable method of coloring wool using plants or animal based sources. In order to understand the chemistry of dyeing wool, we should know the composition of wool. Wool is natural hair grown on sheep and is composed of protein substance called keratin. Keratin is made up of amino acid joins by peptide linkages. Wool is composed of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen and this is the only animal fiber which contains sulphur in addition. Wool is a natural protein fiber containing fibrous protein known as keratin. So, this fiber itself is the keratin. It is the main chemical component about 33 percent in wool. Thus, wool can have beautiful shades with natural dye because keratin is very receptive of taking up dyes. Natural colorants that we have used for wool in this particular lecture, we will be focusing on a few of them. Being a natural fiber, wool is best suited for natural dyes 
resourced as some flowers and plants. The effect of dye concentration on color strength that is K by S of woolen yarn dyed with natural dye extract such as gomferena, globosa, impatiens, balsamenia, mirabilis jalapa and nictanthus arbor tristis, reseda lutola show very good results. We will discuss a few examples here. Increasing the concentration of dye decreases the lightness that is the L star value in wool yarn samples indicating darker shades. The color strength which we have been talking about right from cotton and in silk the K by S value is a single numerical value related to the amount of light absorbing material colorant contained in the sample usually based on spectral data. Pre modenting with metal salts. Pre modenting method shows the best results as compared to other methods with respect to relative K by S. Different metal salts such as alum, ferrous sulphate and stannous chloride were used to enhance the fastness properties that is light, wash, dry and wet rubbing fastness and perspiration of dyed wool yarn. Pre-treatment of wool yarn samples with safe chemicals and metal moderns has shown encouraging results with better fastness properties and enhanced color strength values. Generally, it has been observed that wool always gives better shades than cotton and silk. So, wool is even better because it is still in the fiber stage and the penetration of dye, the diffusion of dye in the uh, woven sample which is a silk sample versus a fiber sample which is wool is definitely more facile in the case of fiber of the wool. And therefore, it, the observation that wool takes up better shades as compared to cotton and silk which are woven fabric is really true. Moving on, the reasons for better dye uptake in wool. When we say it is better that is not sufficient, we have to uh, justify what makes it better. This may be due to the increase of color strength of dyed wool due to fiber swelling and the breakdown of the dye molecule aggregates in the solution became more. Thus, the diffusion of dye molecules in the fiber became easier causing increase in color strength. So, the same thing I had just mentioned that because they are in the fibrous stage, the penetration of the dye in the swollen fiber is more facile and the diffusion of the dye molecule in the fiber takes place very easily thereby causing increase in color strength value in terms of wool fiber. The characteristic of wool fiber or protein fiber are follow. They are composed of amino acids, they have excellent absorbency, moisture regain is high they tend to be warmer than others. They have poor resistance to alkalis, but good resistance to acids and they have good elasticity and resiliency. So, what does it mean that they are most appropriately designed in terms of their molecular structure having you know receptive groups already present on the surface of the fiber which are the amino groups in the amino acid has a C double bond O and NH2 group which I mentioned a while ago and they are excellent absorb, absorbing material and moisture can regain, regain, a regain of moisture is very high. So, all this put together makes it a very good candidate for natural dyeing. 
scouring of wool because as I told you scouring is a method which is meant to remove any and every type of impurity. If there is impurity on the surface of cotton or silk or wool, it will never be able to dye evenly and if the dyeing is not even then it looks very ugly, it becomes patchy and that is not a good method of dyeing. So, therefore, scouring plays an important role in the cleaning up process. It removes natural fats and waxes present in the fiber. It also removes seeds, fragments, any other water soluble impurity and also any soil, husk etcetera, which may have been trapped in the fiber mass during collection and transportation. Scouring of wool differs from cotton because they are structurally chemically very different. Therefore, they have to be scoured differently. Firstly, wool contains a high percentage that is 30 to 60 percent of wool grease compared to 0.5 percent of oil and wax in cotton. Secondly, wool is degraded rapidly with alkali. Hence, it saponifies the saponification of oil and fat is to be done with alkali. It should be done very carefully and below the boiling temperature, otherwise it will jeopardize the strength of the wool fiber. Sodium hydroxide is replaced with by sodium carbonate or ammonia or ammonium carbonate which are much milder as compared to the harsh sodium hydroxide which is normally used for scouring of cotton. So, you see that the treatise, the process name remains the same, but the treatment of the chemical differs from cotton to silk to wool. Now, let us start understanding the dyeing process of wool using gomferena flower extract. The flowers of gomferena were found to get out color in hot water. So, it is one of the easiest method you just dip the flower in gomferena in hot water and very easily all the color comes into the hot water. The flower were earlier frozen after collection and then dipped in hot boiling water to get the maximum color. So, this is also a kind of a freeze drying method where first it is frozen and then it is put into hot water and that exudes all the colorant, which shows deepening of hue color. Increasing the quantity of flowers from 2 gram to 20 gram per 100 ml boiled water for 60 minutes is accompanied with an increase in color strength and depth in color hue. So, it is such an easy process of extraction which requires no further heating, only freezing the flowers in the freezer and then taking them out and plunging it into boiling hot water and then stirring it for just 30 minutes, it will exude out all the colorant that are present in the vacuoles of the cells. Scouring of wool, wool yarn was put in bath containing 0.5 gram per liter of sodium carbonate and 2 gram per liter of non ionic detergent the labolene solution at 40 to 45 degrees at thir for 30 minutes keeping the material to liquor ratio as 1 is to 50. So, it is fairly dilute solution which is being used. The scoured wool was thoroughly washed with tap water and dried at room temperature. The scoured wool yarn was soaked in clean water for 30 minutes prior to dyeing or mordanting, so that any chemical that is embedded in the fiber should be you know out of the fiber 
and the fiber should be clean of not only the scouring chemicals, but also the dirt and the husk and the other impurities that are present in the raw wool. Special pretreatment for Gomferana. Special pretreatment. It has been established that pretreatment with basic compound like morpholine does increase the absorbance of the wool yarn towards dye in the case of Gomferana which has acidic functionalities and it also increases the color depth. So, this was also very meticulously thought of because when the structure of the colorant was elucidated for Gamferana, we found that there are acidic functionalities and therefore, we thought that treating the fab fabric with morpholine can make the dye adhere better. The wool yarn was treated with 2 percent weight by volume aqueous solution of morpholine. The pretreatment was carried out for 1 hour at 27 degrees which is ambient temperature, room temperature keeping the m is to l ratio as 1 is to 20. The sample were washed thoroughly and dried before mordenting. So, this pretreatment was a very special case especially for Gomferana flowers. Mordenting. Natural dyes require chemical in the form of metal salts to produce an affinity between the wool yarn and the pigment of the flower and these chemicals are known as mordants and we have seen this in time and again that mordants have to be used whether they are mordants, whether they are enzymes, whether they are biomordants or whether they are metallic salt mordant. Some source of bridging head is required in all the three cases cotton, silk and wool. Accurately weighed wool sample was treated with different metal salt. Only pre mordanting with metal salt was carried out before dyeing. Wool yarn which was already scoured was dipped in 1 to 2 percent mordant solution and was kept on water bath at 50 degrees centigrade for 1 hour. It is squeezed and dried in air because this more or less remains the same. The mordanting process of silk is quite similar to the mordanting process of wool yarn. The only difference that we learnt in today's lecture on wool is that there was a special treatment of morpholine, a pretreatment which was particularly chosen, meticulously chosen to get better results. Mordanting in dyeing with gomferana. The wool yarn was dyed with dye extract keeping the M is to L ratio, material is to liquor ratio as 1 is to 30 and the pH was maintained at 4 by adding buffer solution that is sodium acetate and acetic acid. Temperature of the dye bath was raised to 60 degrees centigrade over half an hour and left at that temperature for another 30 minutes. The dyed wool yarn was then rinsed and water with water and thoroughly and squeezed and dried. The yarn which was dyed was then dipped in brine for dye fixing. Varied hues of color can be obtained from pre mordanting the wool yarn with ferrous sulphate, stannous chloride, copper sulphate, stannic chloride and potassium dichromate and alum and they were all dyed by aqueous extract of gomferana. The different mordants not only cause difference in hue color and a significant change in K by S value, but also in the L star values and the brightness index values. So, that means that mordanting did help us to get the colors changed appropriately. When we look at the C lab value of wool dyed with gomferana, 
we come to a conclusion that the LAB values are very, very in, uh, in accordance with the fact that the lower the L value, the deeper will be the shade. So, when we look at the L value of ferrous sulphate, it is showing 29.0, whereas when we see for alum or sanic chloride, it is showing 89.2 and 37.7 respectively. Stannous and copper are still closer, but potassium dichromate is much higher as uh, quite in line with uh, alum and that is how we find. But the colors are very different. With alum, it gomferana gives bright green and let me tell you, this flower is magenta in color. By the action of that magenta color with alum, the color changes on the fabric to bright green. With ferrous sulphate, it becomes dark green. With stannous chloride, it becomes purple. With copper sulphate, it becomes moss green. With potassium dichromate, it becomes green. And with stannic chloride, it becomes light purple. Modified pretreatment gave different shades. Fastness properties were found to be very good with pre mordanted wool and pre mordanted morphelin treated wool. Morphelin treatment has increased the shade variety of Gomferina glob globosa as can be seen from the shade card, whereas the aqueous extract has also given beautiful shades of yellow and green. The aqueous extract of Gomferina flower yield shades with good fastness properties. The dye has good scope in the commercial dyeing of wool yarn for carpet industry particularly. The shade card shows good variation in color from the same extract. Now, time and again we have come to this conclusion that one extract of natural dye can give different colors, different shades and that is the beauty of natural dye, which is not possible in synthetic dye. In synthetic dye, a dye will give only one shade. Variation in modern makes all the difference in the hue. With morpholine pretreatment, the wool different shades of green can be obtained from peach colored extract of gomferina flowers. So, you see these are the shades that have been obtained from wool that was dyed without morpholine and the wool that was dried dyed by after morpholine treatment. The same alum looks so different is more yellowish and the shades can be cannot be compared they are absolutely different. They are more on the greenish scale when morpholine is used as a pretreatment, whereas in when it is just used with aqueous without uh, using any pretreatment, only mordanting, then these are the shades which are given on the left hand side. The right hand side shades are after the morpholine pretreatment, then mordanting was done and then dyeing of the wool with gomferina extract was done. Next is dyeing of wool with balsam. Fresh red flowers are frozen and are soaked in hot water 100 to 120 grams in 500 ml water for 2 hours till all the dye bleached out from the flower. This extract was dark peach in color, it was squeezed and filtered the solution. The plant part are cut into small pieces and were refluxed in soxlate in methanol till it discharged color. The process takes 4 to 6 hours. Dark reddish peach extract was obtained from 30 grams of balsam flowers refluxed with 150 ml of methanol. So, two different methods of extractions were carried out. One was simply frozen flowers in water, 
The other one was methanolic extraction in soxalate which took 4 to 6 hours, whereas the frozen flowers in hot water uh, bleached out the color in just 2 hours. Pre and post mordenting of wool. The scoured wool was thoroughly washed with tap water and dried at room temperature in shade. Wool yarn which was already scoured was dipped in 1 to 2 percent of modern solution and was kept on water bath at 50 degrees for 1 hour. This is a standard modenting solution preparation and modenting method. It is squeezed and dried in shade. For post modenting, scoured wool yarn was first dyed by dipping in dye solution and dried. This dyed yarn was dipped in 1 to 2 percent of modern solution and was kept on water bath at 50 degrees for 1 hour. It was squeezed and dried. Different mordants were used in 1 to 2 percent keeping in mind the toxicity factor of some of the mordants such as copper sulphate and potassium dichromate. Sonicator dyeing of wool by balsam. Extracted dye was kept in sonicator and treated wool was dipped in it for 1 hour. The dye liquor was drained and the dyed yarn was not washed in it was only squeezed dried in shade. The dyeing was done by also by conventional method because we wanted to compare between the two method the sonicator method and the conventional method. After dyeing, dyed wool was fixed with 10 grams of sodium chloride in 500 ml that is the brine solution. The dyed yarn was dipped in this solution for an hour and then the yarn was washed with tap water and dried in shade in air. When we look at the C lab values of the pre and post mordented wool, we find that a variety of color is obtained right from brown to peach to reddish brown to light khaki. Light brown was obtained in post mordenting method. So, here we tried both the methods of mordenting, pre mordenting and post mordenting and they gave completely different shades of uh, you know colored wool which itself is very encouraging because both the methods gave completely different shades. In pre modenting we got brown, peach, reddish brown, light khaki whereas in post modenting we got light brown, very light peach, light brown and dark grey in terms of using it as alum, stannic chloride, stannous chloride, ferrous sulphate in that order respectively. The color differences were very obvious and very prominent. The fastness properties of the dyed wool was also found to be quite good as compared the best was seen in the stannic chloride wash fastness was very good, light fastness was very good. Stannous and alum were almost competitive, but ferrous was not as good as what it should have been, but nevertheless these are all results of the dyed fabric. Fastness properties of dyed wool. The fastness properties of dyed wool which includes washing, light, rubbing, perspiration of wool yarn dyed with methanolic and aqueous solution of balsam flower assessed and were found to be very satisfying on the ground that this dye can be used on industrial application. Shades of both aqueous and methanolic extract of balsam are all highly acceptable shades. In dyeing wool with balsam dye, different mordants were used. This dye can be used for dyeing for getting various shades of color of wool. When the yarn was dyed with methanolic extract, it showed light color in wet condition, 
but after drying it became darker. The dyeing was better in methanolic extract than aqueous, particularly in case of wool. Premordented with ferrous sulphate and that was giving good result. Between the two mordanting methods, post mordanting showed better results in case of stannic chloride and alum. Most of the shades obtained were light, but pre mordanting with copper sulphate showed dark green color. So, now you see from a peach solution of the dye, we are getting the end result of dyed wool is dark green. Is not this almost like a magic? Because this is the beauty of natural dyes. The color on the flower and the colorant molecule in the flower then chelates with the metal ion and produces a completely different color on the fabric. When we look at the balsam extract in water and methanolic solutions and their dyed result, we see that alum uh, from the aqueous solution of wool shows very different yellow, whereas alum from the methanolic solution of balsam shows a greenish tinge. Copper sulphate from the aqueous solution is a kind of a a mustardish brown color, whereas copper sulphate in the methanolic has very different, uh, you know, green, dark green color. The iron sulphate or the ferrous sulphate in the aqueous shows dark brown, and that is kind of almost similar in the methanolic extract of the solution of balsam flower. So, some of the colors are similar, but others are quite dissimilar which makes that extraction of water in water or methanol both, both could be you know attempted. Why? Because they are giving different shades and a variety of shade can be obtained from the same balsam flower and this can be a added advantage to this natural dye for dyeing wool. Dyeing wool with mirabilis flower. Wool yarn was washed with sodium with a solution containing 0.5 gram per liter sodium carbonate and 2 gram per liter non ionic detergent lebolene solution at 45 to 40 to 45 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes, keeping the material to liquor ratio at 1 is to 50 that means it is a very dilute solution. The scoured material was then thoroughly washed with tap water and dried at room temperature. The scoured material was soaked in clean water for 30 minutes prior to dyeing or mordanting. Mordanting was done accurately weighed wool sample was treated with different metal salts only pre mordanting was attempted with metal salts and was carried out before dyeing. The mordant was dissolved in water to make a liquor ratio 1 is to 50. The wetted sample was entered into the mordant solution and then it was brought to heating. Temperature of the dye bath was raised only up to 60 degrees and not up to boiling over a period of half an hour and it was left at that temperature for another half an hour. So, which means that it in totality it took only one hour for mordanting. Mordanted wool need to be used immediately for dyeing because some mordants are very sensitive to light and this fact I have already mentioned earlier that we have to take care that we cannot do bulk mordanting and keep the samples and then you know they do not remain as active as what they should be. Dyeing method with mirabilis, the yarn wool yarn was dyed with dyed extract keeping the m is to l ratio as 1 is to 40. In each case the wool dyeing 
the pH was maintained at 4 by adding buffer solution, sodium acetate and acetic acid. Why? Because wool is very sensitive and therefore, it should be the dyeing should be done at a maintained pH. The pH should not get altered and buffer solutions have this capacity to maintain the pH of any dye bath solution. The dye extract was prepared by adding 4 grams of dye powder in 100 ml of water with an m is to l ratio of 1 is to 40. Dyeing was carried out by conventional dyeing method as well as by sonicator method. So, we made a comparative analysis of both the methods. The dyed material was washed with cold water and dried at room temperature. It was then dipped in brine for dye fixing. The color strength was determined calorimetrically using premier color scan at maximum wavelength of the natural colorant. Dye uptake was studied during the course of dyeing process for a total dyeing time of 1 hour with and without ultrasound. Dye uptake was 81 percent and 67 percent respectively. So, a thorough study was done, dye was a dye uptake was studied in conventional method and in sonicator method and it is that very apparent that the dye uptake in the sonicator method because of its ultrasound waves has risen to 81 percent. Whereas, in the conventional method without the ultrasound method it was only 67 percent. The C lab values of wool dyed with Mirabilis shows that the washing and rubbing fastnesses are also mentioned here and the LAB values are mentioned. Alum gives peach color, ferrous of course gives blackish color, stannous gives orange color, copper sulphate gives light green color, potassium dichromate gives purplish gray color and stannic gives dark orange color and all of them show very good fastness properties with Mirabilis, good light fastness and also the reduction in the LAB values are in accordance with what we understand that the lower the L value, the darker is the shade. Here are the shades obtained from Mirabilis flower, alum, stannous chloride, stannic chloride, copper sulphate, iron sulphate and potassium dichromate. And these are such beautiful shades, bright shades with Mirabilis which is a magenta colored flower, very small flower found in probably every garden. It was observed that dyeing with Mirabilis gave fair to good fastness properties in sonicator dyeing as compared to conventional dyeing just in one hour. It showed good dye uptake. The results clearly show that sonicator dyeing is better in terms of better dye uptake, reduced dyeing time and is cost effective. The overall if we can say that it could be used for commercial purpose for dyeing wool yarn and silk fabric and get attain acceptable range of color and acceptable fastness properties. Because after all why are we doing this lecture or why are we trying to understand? We are trying to understand this natural dyeing process of cotton, silk and wool only to make it more popular, to commercialize and to let people know that there are larger number of dye yielding plants which can be explored for dyeing purposes. Scouring and mordenting wool. The scoured material was thoroughly washed with tap water and dried at room temperature. 
the scoured material was soaked in clean water for 30 minutes prior to dyeing or mordanting. Mordanting accurately weighed wool sample was treated with different metal salt, only pre mordanting with metal salts was carried out before dyeing. The mordant was dissolved in water to make liquor ratio 1 is to 50. The wetted sample was entered into the mordant solution and then it was brought to heating and the whole process was executed for 1 hour. Temperature of the dye bath was raised from 260 degrees over a period of half an hour and left at temperature for another 30 minutes. The mordanted material was then rinsed and water with water thoroughly squeezed and dried. Mordanted wool need, needed to use immediately because some of these mordants are very sensitive and time and again we have told that this is to be kept in mind that we cannot mordant bulk samples and keep it they have to be kept because they are sensitive to light. So, they have to be kept and preserved carefully in plastic pouches, ziplock bags and taken out only when they are required to be used. Dying with Nyctanthus, this is another plant which we discovered which has a red stem. The wool yarn was dyed with Nyctanthus equus dye extract keeping m is to l ratio as 1 is to 40. Most of the time we are using that kind of ratio. In case of wool dyeing the pH, wool dyeing the pH was maintained at 4. This also we have seen that maintaining by adding buffer solution of sodium acetate and acetic acid is a general practice while doing the dyeing exercise with wool yarn. The dye extract was prepared by adding 4 grams of dye powder in 100 ml water. The m is to l ratio is 1 is to 40. Dyeing was done by conventional method as well as by sonicator method. The dyed material was washed with cold water and dried at room temperature in air. It was then dipped in brine solution for dye fixing. The color strength was also observed determined calorimetrically using premier color scan machine at a maximum wavelength of the natural colorant. The fastness properties and the LAB values of Nyctanthus are given in this slide. It shows color which is showing bright green, dark green, dull green, moss green, greenish brown and brownish green with alum, ferrous sulphate, stannous chloride, copper sulphate, potassium dichromate and stannic chloride respectively. And similarly we see that as we get darker color the L star values reduces, but the wash fastness are excellent. They are in the range of 5 or 4 to 5, which is one of the best wash uh, fasteners that one can achieve in any kind of naturally dyed fabric, whether it is cotton or silk or wool. These are some of the shades obtained from Nyctanthus flower, the stannic chloride the stannous chloride, alum, copper sulphate, iron sulphate and potassium dichromate. It was observed that dyeing with nyctanthus gave fair to good fastness properties in conventional dyeing which was carried out for one hour. It showed good dye uptake. The structure of the dye molecules show the presence of hydroxyl groups which make them very good substrates for metal chelation. The results clearly show that sonicator dyeing is better in terms of better dye uptake, reduced dyeing time and cost effective. Shades of mehndi green and dark green were obtained 
from the orange stem of nectanthus plant and nectanthus dye extract. Dyeing with Reseda lutola, this is a plant which, which has yellow colored flowers and with the methanolic extraction process, we were able to get the extract of the Reseda flower. Wool yarn was dyed with Reseda dye extract, keeping m is to l ratio as 1 is to 30 and the pH was maintained between 4 to 5 by adding buffer which is having sodium acetate and acetic acid as mentioned earlier. Temperature of the dye bath was raised to 60 degrees over half an hour and left at that temperature for 30 minutes because this is the regular way of using the extract and the use of buffer is also very common for wool dyeing which we did not do in most of the cases of silk. That is why I said that the treatise of cotton dyeing with natural dyes, the treatise of silk dyeing with natural dyes and the treatise of wool with natural dyes have minor differences, but they make major changes. The dyed yarn was then rinsed with water <coughs> thoroughly, squeezed and dried. The material, the dyed material was then dipped in brine for dye fixing. Enzyme used as pre-mordant. Reseda dye was used with enzyme as pre-mordanted wool and we showed that enzymes are also applicable and their LAB values and K by S value were found to be very encouraging. The results were very encouraging. It is for the first time that Reseda has been used with enzyme and have been used as a dye source for textile dyeing for bright yellow colored wool. Shades of a yellow was obtained on wool with protease enzyme. Results of preliminary tests carried out to standardize the dye extraction and dyeing procedures with the Reseda flower showed very good dyeing results. The shade obtained were bright as well as having very good fastness properties. These are some of the shades obtained from Reseda. You see with alum, iron sulphate, copper sulphate, stannic chloride, potassium dichromate and stannous chloride, Reseda showed very good and very good color depth. The, dye, the wool fibers showed very even dyeing. Bright coloration of wool can be obtained from Reseda flower extract. The dyed wool sample showed good fastness properties and different shades of yellow were obtained using different metal mordants. So, what I am trying to draw your attention, in conclusion we can say that in many aspect wool dyeing with natural dyes is quite similar to dyeing of cotton and silk with natural dyes but they have subtle differences and therefore, we need to understand that what are these differences. The extraction processes of some of the newer flowers have been discussed in today's lecture and the morpholin treatment was one new experimentation which we did, which was giving very good results when compared with the non-morpholine treated the wool. So, we have made comparative study of conventional method and sonicator method. We have made differences in using metal mordants and um, enzymes. We have made methods which, which we have made comparative methods, so that one can use the desired color combination which 
one wants to actually take it up for the commercial scaling. Here are the methods which we have elaborately discussed and the treatise of wool has been shown that it is a better absorbance of natural colors, but yet it still needs metal mordant or any kind of mordant whether it is enzyme or biomordant which can enhance the color. We have also shown that you know aqueous extract and methanolic extract of balsam both can be used which means that we have done a very thorough study of showing the versatility of these extraction processes. We have shown the versatility of sonicator and its benefit that in one hour we achieve color which can be achieved in three hours of conventional dyeing. And the dye uptake has been also mentioned that it went up as high as 81 percent of K by S uh, increase, which is by itself a very uh, you know special case and not every processes so far were claiming to have such good dye uptake. We have also shown that sonicator method is very applicable and it can be scaled up to commercial level. So, all this put together we try to understand that natural dyeing of wool is much easier, much perfect, much intense as compared to silk and therefore, my statement that cotton is the toughest to dye still holds good because what we have tried to do here is to show the entire process and the only thing that we have to bear in mind is that the wool requires a very optimal pH that is 4 to 5 which can only be attained by using buffer and the buffer which is made out of sodium acetate and acetic acid. So, these are some of the small small nuances which we have to keep in mind and then only we can proceed with good you know uh, processes of natural dyeing of wool. Natural dyeing of wool requires a little bit of meticulous planning. Just the way we saw that in cotton we were doing a tannic acid treatment because it was a prerequisite and then we did mordanting and then dyeing. In the case of silk we only did scouring and then straight away we went to do mordanting. However, mordanting was done on in a milder way and with lesser number or with lesser weight of uh, percentage of the mordant because that was what because silk is a very delicate fabric. But in the case of wool we try to you know modify the method even more according to the strength and requirement of the delicate wool fibers which are made up of keratin. So, a very good understanding first is required what is the fabric made up of. Once we understand the chemistry of fabric, then we should understand the chemistry of the colorant and both should then be compatibly matched by using an appropriate mordant because that is how we will be able to match and get the best results. And the best results will only come when the K by S value is high. If the K by S value falls lower than the control, then the whole experiment is a failure. That means, with every mordant the K by S value should be more than that of the control. And that is what makes us understand that these values 
are an indication that these uh, dye uptake has been good. Now, between the dye uptake and the dye adherence, it can take up dye, but it may not hold the dye. So, there is a subtle difference between dye uptake and dye adherence. If the dye uptake is good, that is not all. The dye adherence also has to be good and when that happens, which happens with the aid of mordant, then it is going to give good fastness properties. So, with this we have come to a conclusion that natural dyeing of wool is possible keeping in mind some of this the minute salient features keeping in mind the delicacy of the fiber it is achievable doable and we can get beautiful shades on wool because wool is the best substrate for accepting natural colorants. With this we have come to an end of this lecture. Thank you. Hello, I am Shikha Dikshit, I teach psychology and I work with the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences at IIT Kanpur. Today I will talk about what is causal attribution or how do people understand causes of behavior. Causal attribution is one of the major topics in social cognition in psychology and this refers to the fact that people attribute causes to their own behavior as well as to behaviors of others. So, understanding the antecedent conditions of behaviors and events is one of the major topics in social cognition. Causal attribution is about finding explanations and these explanations serve a functional purpose since they are useful in uh, the purpose of planning of behavior and regulation of responses. As far as uh, attribution of causes is concerned, generally people either do internal attribution or external attribution. Internal attribution when causes are understood in terms of internal characteristics of people and uh, external attribution when causes are understood in terms of contextual and situational features. The main perspective that is employed in the understanding of causal attribution is the naive scientist perspective and this has emerged from the research on attribution itself and it views attribution process as a detailed and systematic causal search. And this is the dominant view about understanding attribution in social cognition. However, in recent time this is not the only view, there are alternative views also which try to understand how people make quick, uh, quick judgments about uh, causality. So, now the question is that why is it that people make causal attributions? Uh, this the answer to this question can be provided in terms of need for prediction and control. People need to predict their environment and hence it is important for them to understand antecedent conditions of any behavior or any event. Also causal analysis is related to various other processes other than attribution. It also becomes the basis of regulation of responses. People also develop causal theories based on their experience and they employ these theories in different domains. As far as attribution theory is concerned, it consists of mainly three theoretical formulations. One is the Heder's theory of naive psychology 
The other one is Jones and Davis's correspondent inference theory and the third one is Kelly's covariation model and causal schemas. There are other areas of psychology also from where some principles have been picked up and extended to understanding of causality. These areas are emotions, self perception as well as personality. Psychologists have also tried to understand attribution in specific domain areas. Psychologists have tried to outline the different dimensions that people use to understand causality in domains such as achievement domain that is understanding causality regarding achievement related behavior such as success and failure, depression, helping behavior as well as close relationships. <laughs>